Democratic lawmakers have shown little fear in challenging Governor Hochul so far this year. The state Senate rejected her nominee to lead the state's top court, and few lawmakers are publicly embracing her state budget plans. Republican State Assemblyman Andy Goodell says legislative Democrats have the wind at their backs. It looks as so the state legislature is going to have a lot more leverage than they've had in the past. Both houses, of course, have a supermajority, which means that both houses have the votes that they want to to override a governor's veto. Governor Hochul has said she wants to work with lawmakers, and Democratic State Senator Mike Gianera says there is room for compromise. This always should have been a collaborative process. Under the previous governor, it wasn't as much. Um, this is our second go around with, uh, with Governor Hochul, and hopefully, as, after we get the one house out, we sit around the table, we'll be able to agree on more than this. But there are points of contention. Hochul wants to further change New York's controversial cashless bail law and place a payroll tax in the New York City metro area to help pay for mass transit. A plan to expand housing and even a proposal to end new natural gas hookups could face roadblocks. Democratic strategist Jack O'Donnell says Hochul still has some advantages. The legislature does have a lot of say in this, but let's not forget that the budget process is different than, say, a nomination process. The governor holds a few more cards no matter how many members are in each house. But much of what happens on hot-button issues like crime and the cost of living could ultimately be dictated by what New York voters are thinking and most concerned about. Whether the legislators are getting calls from, from constituents, whether there's big crowds coming out in front, um, all of those things matter, and, and the timing on them matters.